Okay, in this video we're going to talk about the properties of the cotangent graph. So in the last video we saw um, how to get the graph of the cotangent function um, just from transformations of the graph of the tangent function. So we uh, shifted it a little bit and then flipped it upside down, um, or really reflected over the y-axis, which actually happened to kind of be the same thing, um, just coincidentally. Um, but anyway, so this is uh, y equals cotangent of x. So what we want to do now is uh, set aside some space and then talk about some of the properties here. So it's going to go pretty similarly to um, a video about the properties of the tangent graph. So we're going to start with the domain. And again, remember the domain is the set of all the x values where a function is defined. It's a set of all the x values where a function is defined. So um, before we jump right into that, let's just remember that uh, cotangent of x equals cosine of x divided by the sine of x. Okay. So we want to think about what kind of domain restrictions might we have. Well, um, cosine and sine, the domain for each of these guys, it's all real numbers, right? You can take the cosine of anything you want, take the sine of anything you want, and everything's good. Okay, but here, when you start dividing like that, then you have to worry. So we have to make sure that the denominator is not zero. Okay, and we see, uh, so sine of x, we know that that's zero whenever x is zero, pi, negative pi, two pi, negative two pi, uh, three pi, negative three pi, and so on. Okay, and we see that um, at exactly those values, we have vertical asymptotes. Okay? Remember, uh, dividing by zero, um, graphically, what that means is that you have a vertical asymptote. Okay, so dividing by zero, as long as everything's reduced, you're not canceling anything. Um, dividing by zero, dividing some non-zero number by zero, that means you have a, uh, a vertical asymptote. Okay? So sine of zero, zero, sine of pi is zero, sine of two pi is zero, sine of negative pi is zero. So there's vertical asymptotes at all, at all those places. Okay, so basically the domain, um, so all the other real numbers, everything else is okay. Okay, so everything except numbers that make sine of x equal to zero. So if we want to say that in words, what we would say is uh, all, uh, all real x except for uh, the zeros <coughs> of sine. Okay, so that's how we'd say it in words. How might we express it mathematically? So we could use set builder notation, and we could say uh, all x such that x does not equal k pi, where k is any integer. Okay, so we've talked a lot about this kind of notation before, so I don't want to uh, dwell too much on it, but it's called a set builder notation, and it's basically just a short way of saying, it's a short way of saying an infinite list, basically. Okay, so k can represent any integer at all, 0, 1, negative 1, 2, negative 2. So if k is 0, then x becomes 0, and x is not allowed to be 0, as we see here, vertical asymptote. Okay. Um, and if k is 1, then x becomes pi, and x is not allowed to be pi, so that's why we have the not equal sign here. Okay, so all real values of x are allowed except um, for k pi, but k pi represents all the zeros of sine. Okay, so this right here is just a mathematical way of saying this English sentence here. Okay. Uh, English sentence, although maybe incomplete, so all real x except for the zeros of sine. Um, anyway, so that's the domain here mathematically. So the next thing we want to talk about is the range. And luckily, just like the uh, tangent function, the range is relatively simple. So just like the tangent function, we have these arrows up here that just mean uh, the graph keeps going infinitely far up. Arrows down here, the graph keeps going infinitely far down. So no matter how far up you go in the positive y direction, you'll always have a point on the graph somewhere. No matter how far down you go in the negative y direction, you'll always have a point on the graph somewhere. Okay. So basically, um, you can go as far up as you want, as far down as you want. You'll always have a y value somewhere on the graph. So another way of saying that is there is no y value that is not on the graph. So in other words, every y value appears somewhere on the graph. So since the range covers all the possible y values, um, every single one of them, then the range is negative infinity to positive infinity, or if you want to say that in words, uh, all real numbers. All real numbers. Okay, so that says real. Try that one more time. Not much better. Okay, so anyway, that's the range. Uh, so domain and range. Uh, next, we should probably talk about the period real quick. So the period, we've actually mentioned this before, um, and it is the same as the tangent, but the period is just pi. Okay, so we talked about it before. We've actually used that fact before to evaluate trig functions and uh, see some properties on the unit circle, things like that. But now we're going to talk about it graphically. <clears throat> so we see that since the period is pi, what that means is every pi units, the, the function just repeats the same values. 
Okay, so we see that every pi units, uh, the graph is repeating itself. Okay? So from 0 to pi, that's a distance of pi units. Okay, so if we take this little piece here from 0 to pi, if we go over to the right, pi units, so from pi to 2 pi, it's the exact same shape. Okay? And here from 0 to pi, if we go to the left, pi units, so from negative pi to 0, that's the exact same shape. Okay, so if you keep going over by pi units, you're going to have that same exact shape. So 0 to pi, that shape. Pi to 2 pi, that shape. 2 pi to 3 pi, that same shape. 3 pi to 4 pi, 4 pi to 5 pi, 5 pi to 6 pi, and so on and so forth. Okay, so you can go infinitely far to the right and infinitely far to the left. You're always going to have this shape repeating every pi units. Okay? So that's, um, that's what it means graphically um, in terms of the period here. Okay, so that's what the period means there. Um, period of pi units means every pi units, the graph just repeats itself. Um, okay, so domain range of period. The next thing to talk about is uh, vertical asymptotes, which I'll abbreviate VA. So VA is short for vertical asymptotes. So um, we talked about it briefly when we talked about the domain, but basically you have a vertical asymptote here whenever your denominator is zero. Okay, so it's just like rational functions and rational type functions in pre-calculus or college algebra. You know, you got polynomials on top and the bottom. Um, whenever the bottom is zero, as long as the top is not also zero, uh, you'll have a vertical asymptote. Okay. So, um, yeah, if the top and bottom are zero at the same time, then you don't have an asymptote, you have a hole. Um, but that's not going to happen here because cosine and sine, they're never zero at the same time. Okay, they can, they're both zero at infinitely many points, but they're different points. Okay? So cosine um, is zero uh, and sine is zero, but they're never zero at the same time. Okay? So nothing, like, nothing crazy like that happens here, so there's nothing to worry about. That's good. Really, really good. So basically the vertical asymptotes, um, they happen at all the breaks in the domain. Okay? Everything that's not in the domain is actually where we have vertical asymptotes. So what we want to do then... And we don't want to use set builder notation for vertical asymptotes because vertical asymptotes are lines, so we want to express them as uh, equations of lines. So vertical asymptotes uh, x equals k pi, where k is any integer. Okay, and again, that's just a short way of saying that x, uh, you know, x equals pi, x equals zero. Okay, so if k is one, then you have one pi. If k is zero, you have zero pi, or just zero. Um, x equals negative pi, x equals two pi. So if k is negative one, you'll have that. If k is positive two, you have that. x equals negative two pi. So if k is negative two, you'll have that, and so on and so forth. Okay, so this is just a short way of saying all that. <clears throat> okay, so, um, and it's also worth mentioning, or we already mentioned it, but it's worth writing down, that these are precisely the uh, zeros of sine. Okay, so these are the zeros. So you have vertical, so the cotangent function has vertical asymptotes at the zeros of the sine function. And uh, remember, I, I don't think we mentioned it in this video, but we mentioned it in the properties of the tangent video. Um, remember, a zero of a function, it's a pre-calculus college algebra term, uh, a zero of a function is just some number that makes that function equal to zero. So sine of 0 is 0, sine of pi is 0, sine of 2 pi is 0, sine of negative pi equals 0. So all, these, all four of these numbers here, negative pi, 0 pi, and 2 pi, they're all zeros of the sine function okay, because they make the sine function equal to 0. Okay. So uh, that's vertical asymptotes. Now what about um, x-intercepts? So remember, an x-intercept, it's a value of x or of the whole point, um, either way you can describe it. But it's basically, it's a place where you're on the x-axis, okay? Whether you're touching it or crossing it. So you could cross it, you cross over, you can touch and turn around. Um, as long as you're on the x-axis, that's an x-intercept, okay? So um, where do we have x-intercepts here? Well, here's one at negative pi over 2, positive pi over 2, positive 3 pi over 2. Uh, there will be another one at 5 pi over 2, 7 pi over 2. There'll be another one at negative 3 pi over 2, negative 5 pi over 2, and so on and so forth. Okay? So um, basically, 1 times pi over 2, 3 times pi over 2, 5 times pi over 2, 7 times pi over 2, negative 1 times pi over 2, negative 3 times pi over 2. So um, that's all the odd numbers, odd integers, multiplied by pi over 2. And um, we mentioned that in the last video also, or not really the last video, but in the properties of the tangent graph. Um, <clears throat> we mentioned that, and what are those? Those are the zeros of the cosine function, right? So, um, and also, that's similar to how rational functions and rational type functions behave. So if you got something on top and something on bottom, the whole thing is zero when the top is zero. 
okay? As long as the bottom is not also zero. And again, that's not happening here, which is good. Okay, cosine and sine, they're never zero at the same time, which is great, okay? So the cotangent is zero whenever cosine is zero. Okay? And we don't have to worry because whenever cosine is zero, sine itself is not zero, so, so that's good. Okay, so uh, again, cotangent is zero whenever cosine is zero, and we know that cosine is zero at pi over two, negative pi over two, three pi over two, negative three pi over two, all the odd integer multiples of pi over two. And we've talked about how to express that a couple times now. So it's all the set of all x such that x equals uh, 2k plus one times pi over two where k is any integer. Okay, so again, k represents any arbitrary integer. So multiply it by two, you get two k, which is always even, because it's divisible by two, so of course it has to be even. Then you add one, you get something odd. So two k plus one is just an arbitrary odd integer. So what this just says is take any arbitrary odd integer, any odd integer at all, multiply it by pi over two. <clears throat> and that gives you uh, an x-intercept of the cotangent graph. Okay. So same exact thing as the uh, x-intercepts of the cosine graph, or another way of saying that is the uh, zeros. Okay, so zeros and x-intercepts, they're really kind of the same thing. That's a pre-calculus called the algebra concept there. So uh, zeros of cosine. So it's worth writing down that these uh, are exactly the zeros of cosine. Because again, whenever cosine is zero, cotangent is also zero at the same time. Okay, so that's um, x-intercepts. Now what's next? How about uh, y-intercepts? So remember, a function can have at most only one y-intercept. Because if you have more than one y-intercept, then you're on the y-axis more than once, which means you fail the vertical line test and you're not a function. Okay, so what's the y-intercept here? Well, um, we ask ourselves, is this graph ever on the y-axis? Uh, no, okay, it's not. It's actually the y-axis, x equals zero, that's the y-axis. It's a vertical asymptote, okay? So the tangent, or the, sorry, the cotangent graph uh, never touches that, so uh, there's no y-intercept, basically. Okay. So y-intercept, uh, none. <coughs> okay. Okay, so uh, y-intercept, none. All right, so we talked about the domain, the range, the period, vertical asymptotes, uh, x-intercepts, y-intercept. So now um, it's probably worth mentioning, just like with the tangent graph, um, here there is no concept of amplitude. Okay, so remember, amplitude is a thing that applies to sines and cosines, um, just to wavy type things, so just sines and cosines. So um, it does not make sense to talk about amplitude with uh, tangents and cotangents, and secants and cosecants, really. Okay. So there's no concept of amplitude here. Okay. So uh, definitely want to keep that in mind. Um, and similarly, um, it doesn't really make sense to talk about phase shift with cotangent. So again, if you talk about phase shift with cotangent, people will know what you mean, um, but it's probably best to avoid it. Just use uh, like horizontal shift. Because um, phase shift, people generally use that just for waves like sines and cosines. Um, but you know, strictly speaking, it's sort of like that, but it's uh, people will know what you mean otherwise. Um, but you know, with amplitude, it just does not make sense to use amplitude with cotangent. There's nothing really, there's nothing there. There's nothing to talk about with amplitude. Okay, but phase shift, it just means horizontal shift, but people generally only use that for waves, like sine and cosine. <clears throat> okay, so um, one last thing worth mentioning is uh, cotangent. Uh, just like the tangent function, cotangent is an odd function. Okay, so cotangent is odd function. So just like with the tangent function, what that means uh, is cotangent of negative x equals negative cotangent of x. Okay, okay. so um, we've used this fact before with, um, you know, on the unit circle evaluating cotangent at certain points, things like that. Um, but now in terms of the graph, uh, so what does it mean? What does it mean graphically? If you're an odd function graphically, so this is what it means algebraically. Okay, cotangent of negative x equals negative cotangent of x. That's what it means algebraically. Okay, but graphically, what does it mean? Well, just like with tangent, uh, graphically it means you're symmetric over the origin. Okay, and what does it mean to be symmetric over the origin? Well, it means if you reflect over y and then uh, over the y-axis, then reflect over the x-axis, you're going to have a mirror image of what uh, you reflected, basically. Okay, so for example, um, let's just focus on this little tiny piece right here. <clears throat> 
So this piece right here, if we take this piece right here okay, and reflect it over the y-axis, then we're going to kind of sort of get a piece like this, okay, kind of sort of like that. Okay, and then if we take this re newly reflected piece and reflect it over the x-axis, then we're going to get exactly this piece right here. Okay. Okay, and it's true for basically everything uh, on this graph here. Okay, so this whole graph, you can reflect the whole graph over the y-axis, then reflect it all over the x-axis, and you're just going to get um, basically another piece of that graph back. Okay. okay, so that's it for properties of the cotangent graph. So again, domain, range, period, um, vertical asymptotes, uh, x-intercepts, y-intercept, there's no y-intercept, no concept of amplitude, uh, phase shift, it's best to avoid talking about phase shift cotangent, maybe just use horizontal shift. Um, and cotangent is an odd function, which means it's symmetric over the origin. So reflect over y, reflect over x, and you just get a piece of the graph back. So that's properties of the cotangent graph.